welcome back to my youtube channel this is daniel rosal here i wanted to do a video today um running through my whole uh series of videos about backup internet connectivity i'm going to call this one how to get really reliable home internet the reason i'm doing that is i'm trying to target uh people or help people with this information who may not even have heard of back over internet or failover internet they might not be familiar with those keywords um, but that is what i'm going to be talking about uh, in today's video now I did a whole series of videos about this in the summer and surprisingly those got a relatively decent amount of views and comments and emails and alongside that I've just been seeing a lot of talk on um, social media mostly on Facebook groups people frustrated with their home internet and you know how can I do better with my home internet which makes sense because um, I guess the work from home workforce has just mushroomed uh, since the pandemic it used to be something that the few people with remote jobs and maybe freelancers were working from home. I've been doing this uh, this lifestyle for four years now, thereabouts, and now it's like everybody. Now it's like who's not working from home? It's probably the people with hybrid jobs in their in-office day are uh, not at home, and the rest of us are. So dramatic, dramatic shift, and that definitely poses a challenge on the internet infrastructure because no one really envisioned this, uh, including in places like where I live, paradoxically in Israel, the high-tech capital of the Middle East, the internet infrastructure is still kind of somewhat old school uh, in Jerusalem, relatively central. The best internet connection I can get at the moment for my money is VDSL with the like three megabit per second upload speed. So fiber isn't even uh, widely available yet, even though they're supposedly working on that quickly. So when you're dealing with internet being delivered over the last mile by these technologies, and that's an important thing to know about the internet that these kind of technologies dsl coaxial they're really last mile technologies the backbone of the internet uh runs on fiber and it runs even through national switches all the way it's going being carried on fiber until it gets really close to uh to the actual subscriber slightly different in uh in commercial uh, internet connectivity but for the kind of residential internet that you or i might have and we're struggling with oftentimes the reason as well there is more demand on the network and in many cases we're dealing with also um infrastructure that is just not that great and uh that combination can pose a lot of problems in terms of uh, throttling and slow speeds etc so alongside all these chats about internet uh connectivity i've been seeing somewhat i would consider to be pretty lousy advice being uh, battered about on Facebook. You know, people say, oh, my my internet goes down for 30 minutes a day. What should I do? And people say, oh, you know, just uh, just get rid of the internet. Just uh, use, use, a, use a hotspot for your phone. And internet connectivity, cellular internet connectivity does have a role in uh, home connectivity or can have a role. And actually in the setup I'm going to talk about here, um, it leverages the power of, or the power of the existence of cellular connectivity um if you live somewhere out in the sticks like you know somewhere really far out in the australian outback uh it might be your only option or a satellite might be your only option but if you live in an urban center there's a general you know as a general rule in technology it's better to get stuff over a wire than it is through the air so that applies to ethernet versus wi-fi it applies it applies even in the world of microphones uh wired microphones versus wireless microphones if you want reliability uh, it's generally best to opt for a wired connectivity source. So my the connection I've designed or the network architecture I've designed leverages both a uh, wired internet, uh, which is DSL, and it requires uh, and it leverages cellular, but only as a backup. And I'm going to talk in this video about how anyone can set that up for themselves at generally pretty low cost. And I'm going to be just overlaying some uh, diagrams throughout this video, so you won't have to watch me talking here in my home office for 40 minutes. But I'm going to try go through everything in this video that somebody interested in setting this up in their house might want to know. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing or talking about is something called internet failover. And what that means is that we're going to have one internet connection, a primary. And if that goes down or is interrupted, it's going to fail over, hence the name failover, to a secondary internet connection. It is not the same thing as connection bonding. And this is a common... Uh, source of confusion even among the home networking world and, and YouTube for that matter where people will think they're doing connection bonding but they're not actually bonding connections. Int connection bonding is more advanced you could say perhaps. Uh, it involves the similarity is that you're going to be using multiple connections 
but it requires some infrastructure in the cloud outside of your home network in order to bind together the packets as they go out to the internet and then split them off to the different uh, wide area networks, to the different internet sources. So there is a software called Speedify and I've reviewed Speedify on this channel. And that, that's, that's, that's good. It's basically, it kind of looks like a VPN from the outside, but what it actually is doing is the Speedify provides the infrastructure uh, to do that combination of packets. So in other words, let's just take this down a technical level. When you're gonna have internet coming in from different sources, and that's going to be, uh, Speedify will pull them together and give you one internet connection. Now this might sound very esoteric, but connection bonding is actually very, very useful. Uh, it's used widely for years in broadcasting. So if you're doing a video link up with a correspondent in Kabul or something, uh, you don't wanna re rely on one shaky cell phone signal. So there's been a market for this stuff for years. Uh, these little hardware devices that will literally tether together three or four mobile networks or one satellite plus two mobile networks and they'll give you one really robust connection there's two separate benefits to um to connection bonding that are actually different one is speed connection bonding will give you uh will generally aggregate is or is capable theoretically of aggregating connectivity so if you have a 10 megabit per second line and a 10 megabit per second line it can give you 20. Um, but there's actually another main, uh, quite a significant benefit, and that's that its failover is typically instant, uh, which means that if you're dealing with a hardware device, which is what we'll be talking about today, for putting together different internet connection sources, that, that process of failover itself of, okay, the hardware has to have some means of checking each connection so that when one line goes down, it says, hey, this line is down let's go to line two that sometimes isn't instant instantaneous and even if it is instantaneous on the application layer on the uh on the network layer sorry on the application layer it uh sometimes is not so that what that means again in simple language is that you might be browsing google chrome watching a video and uh your failover device might swap the connection but that might take 10 seconds before the video starts playing again Whereas with uh, connection bonding, theoretically, it's instant. And if you've used Speedify, you can get that. So Speedify is a decent option. And the reason I'm, uh, I use this setup personally is that it's kind of once you have it deployed, you own your own hardware, uh, you have to pay for an additional internet connection, which is a cellular connection. But once you've got all that stuff set up, you're kind of good. With Speedify, it is a proprietary um technology by a third party technically i'm sure they will say the privacy policy is locked in but you know they are you are passing all your dns queries and internet data through the through their system and from a privacy standpoint that would kind of make me uncomfortable take away the cost perspective so what i've done is um set up a load balancing router on my network now it doesn't have to be a load balancing router but that's the first thing you're going to need to set this up so just to step back again for a second, what this system I'm gonna describe is doing is called failover. It's not the same as, uh, as, as connection bonding because we're not actually bonding the connections in the cloud. We're just gonna have a few redundant connections or actually, if you're just using two, you've got one redundant connection, bringing that into your home or business. And that means that when connection one fails, you can go over to uh, connection two. So what you need to make this work, failover, but we're not combining the connections, that's important. Um, you can do load balancing with these connections and that means that you know you can say, hey, I want all my Skype traffic to go through this wide area network, through this internet connection source. I want all my internet traffic to go through this one, but again, it does not equate to connection bonding for reasons that I hope are now a bit, a bit more clear. Um, okay, so failover and how I do failover on my network. So the first thing that um, you need is a internet router and a router is actually a router and modem these days, almost always, um, that has multiple WAN ports. Now, when you look at the back of your average internet router, you're gonna see usually they're color coded and if they're not color coded, they'll have labels. LAN, local area network, these are where you plug in ethernet cables for your local uh, devices. And you're gonna have 
typically one port that says WAN, Wide Area Network. And that basically is if you have an upstream source of internet, you're going to put the router into that and then you're going to connect your downstream appliances there. Now, that's not going to work for a failover setup because you're we're going to need to put multiple WANs on the network. So I'll show my network diagrams in a second. What I have done is I have my ISP router, my ISP supplied router, which I keep on my network because if they want to support um, issues on their network, they are able to remotely log in and check out my settings. Um, but you technically, that, that step's optional. You could actually skip your ISP router and you just would need to find a multi-WAN router that had a modem that was compatible with your ISP and to put in the settings. For the sake of simplicity, I've decided not to do that and I keep the ISP router on my network. The next thing that I did was I added a 4G cellular um, router to my network. Now here's here's the thing, here's why I've sort of given the theory, if you will, of failover internet and that's that that second connection doesn't have to be cellular. It, that could be satellite, that could be, it could be another uh, DSL connection or you could go DSL and coaxial. Essentially what we're trying to do here is um, orchestrate a situation in which you never don't have a viable internet connection. So the best way to think about it is what combination of connections, even if that's just two, is going to make it as least likely as possible that, there, that both connections will ever not be available. So I kind of actually like mobile and um, I like mob mobile and wired because of the fact that they're being delivered through different infrastructure. One is coming from a being delivered over the air via a broadcasting station. The other one's coming in through the ground. Um, and the reason that is, is if I don't know, if some digger cut through the ground and digged up a bunch of internet cables, they might guess both coax and DSL might be down. So that's the reason I've done it like this. Uh, I would use satellite for the same reason, but it's just a lot more expensive. Um, and you know, if, if you can get a 5G router in your area or a 5G modem affordably instead of 4G, then by all means do that. Uh, the only reason I use 4G, it was just a ton cheaper to get it. It was a difference between like $100 and $500 for the, for the router. And the actual subscription would have been pretty similar. So I went for 4G because the connection is barely in use. Uh, and I do pay a monthly subscription for a 4G data SIM card just for having backup connectivity. So the next thing you're going to need after you've got your two routers is a multi-WAN router. Now, here's where the terminology gets a bit confusing. A load balancing router is um, basically any router. So you're going to be using your routers, including your ISP router and your 4G router, as bridges. You're going to be using them just as modems. And the actual router for the network will be the next device you're putting on there. So you, you do have to know if you can get a 4G modem versus a 4G router, that's better. Um, if you can get a... Uh, you know VDSL modem it's just that it's harder to find modems than it is router modems these days so it's actually often easier just to buy a router and work it as a modem and that's another that's something that you'll have to figure out so after you've done that so you get your two modems then the next thing is going to be your actual router now what this can be basically any any router that has multiple WAN ports you have a few options here one you have a multi WAN router and they do make these for like gamers they're basically consumer routers that broadcast Wi-Fi, um, but they're gonna have multiple WANs and they're gonna have a load balancing feature. That's one product category. Next product category is going to be uh, load balancing routers. And these are kind of business hardware uh, where you know businesses will use these actually in the cloud uh, for balancing incoming connections to a data center. But you can use them on your home network too. And the final category is what's called a wired router or a VPN router. And these are the same things. They'll just be writers that can work as writers in your home network, but they, the difference between them and your average writer is that they've multiple wide area network ports. So get yourself one of those. Um, I bought mine for about a hundred bucks. It's a TP-Link uh, load balancing router. And do I recommend TP-Link? Actually, I do not. Um, I have found this device finicky. It seems to be working okay now. Um, the other options in the space, Cisco make ones. Ubiquity make one, uh, Mikri Talk, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. They do one as well. So you've got a few manufacturers 
and uh, I think Mickey Mick, Mickey Truck, I think it's called. Um, I think they're the more kind of customizable one, and a lot of people really like Ubiquity. I've had TP trouble with TP Link support, and I haven't found them that good, so I can't really recommend TP Link hardware personally. Although it's what I have now, it was what was easy for me to get, and it does work. But I wouldn't be buying it again. Um, so then, what you need to do is basically connect your uh, multiple internet modem routers into the next piece of gear, which is going to be your whatever whatever you've bought for this aspect. So that can mean whether it's your your load balancer or it's a wired router or it's a VPN router or whatever it's called. It doesn't really matter. You'll find these in IT networking. You'll find these, you might find a load balancing router in your local computer store. If you do not, uh, go to an enterprise IT supplier and explain what you're trying to do and they will have them. There's another company called Draytech I should have mentioned and Draytech do interesting products because they actually, typically when you get into this world of multi-WAN routers, um, there's a few more manufacturers I'm forgetting about, but when you get into this world of, or this product category, people, the manufacturers don't put Wi-Fi into the routers. The reason for that is these are typically used in businesses. Uh, and businesses, it's more typical to separate out the components. So you're gonna have your modem, then you're gonna have your router, then you might have your access point or access points downstream broadcasting Wi-Fi. So in a business environment, it's more typical. So that's the only reason for that, but it's just important to know what you're buying. If you if you want to minimize your hardware, and I actually recommend doing the opposite. I actually think the approach of separating out the components like business networking do is actually a lot more smart. The reason for that is it's more modular. So if, you, if 5G routers come down in price and you decide, hey, let's upgrade to 5G for the cellular. So you just buy, a, buy yourself a 5G router and you take the 4G one off the network. If you have something like a Draytech that has built-in 4G and this built-in modem and that built-in modem and built-in Wi-Fi, then you're stuck with whatever's in that product. So although it was initially tempting to me to buy something like a Draytech, the more I thought about it, I realized it's actually better to separate out the components. Um, that's my opinion anyway. So get yourself your load balancer. So let's just roll back to where we are, where we are so far. We have our... Um, we have our ISP router, we have our cellular router, we have our load balancer, and now you just need to set this up. So because we're not talking about a specific product, it's gonna be different for each product, but basically they make it fairly easy. I've done videos on how to set up uh, load balancing on the on the uh, TP-Link ER605. It's not super difficult. You basically get your WAN1 and WAN2 connections running, and you've that sometimes is the tricky part to make sure you've got the Routers actually set up as modems and you know, there there's no IP conflicts um, Once you're there, it's typically quite easy You just create a backup rule and my backup rule just says look if the primary is not available go to the secondary Now what I do is I periodically do spot checks once every few months I go into the uh, transmission log and I see how much the load balancer is pulling from each wide area network and what I'm looking for is a little bit from the backup if there's no pull from the backup whatsoever I would suspect that it's not working there's a problem what I see typically is 1% or 2% usage from the backup internet connection and that tells me that everything is good so now we can connect everything to the load balancer and that means wired internet computers that means uh, ethernet switches Basically, you build your network from whatever hardware device we put in that's going to be doing the load balancing. That's the starting point. Everything upstream is just modems and combining connections. So if you're going to invest anywhere, probably invest in this piece. Get yourself like a big, big wired broadband router with lots and lots of switches, uh, etc. That would be my advice. Um, and what I have in my network is I actually have, oh, it gets complicated. I have a Wi-Fi router on the end. Firstly, I have a couple of Ethernet switches. They're running into my computer, my NAS, my uh, whatever else is wired on my network. Then I have a Wi-Fi router to broadcast Wi-Fi, but that's only actually running as, an, that's running in access point mode. So you're going to need a router that either you can configure as an access point or that has an access point mode. TP-Link's router, which is what I'm using, actually has access point functionality. 
Um, so that's bringing out a wi- Wi-Fi network and connecting everything wireless. So your wireless printers and your uh, smartphones connect to the internet and your tablets all connect through the router and the router pulls connectivity from the load balancer and the load balancer pulls connectivity from your various WANs. That's how this all works. And I even have, just to show you how far you can take this, um, I have another access point off the router. So to extend the network, it's one of these, uh, you know, TP-Link things. Obviously, if you can do uh, actual APs, wired APs, that's preferable. If you're a renter, then uh, you can do something like set up a mesh network or use uh, APs throughout the house. And you can keep going at, at infinitum, basically. You're just bringing, you're playing with networking. You're... You're taking it everything to the router and from the router you can either connect directly to the router or you can put an ap etc etc and carry your network out that's it um and it works really well i used to have daily internet outage um there was like daily downtime from the isp the other isp was also sucky so i was like well if one is bad and two is bad and one and two are my only options what can i do and um i couldn't think of a solution and then i went on this rabbit hole and i'm honestly glad that i did because the internet now basically never goes out um i don't watch what's going on in the network because i don't really care if it's coming from isp1 or isp2 um i just go into the spot check thing periodically to make sure it's working and uh, that's it so i think this is i mean in terms of the costs of this setup we're talking total costs one time uh, capex let's look at capex capital expenditure about 100 bucks for a um uh, 4g router 100 dollars there give or take um your load balancer might be another 100 this, this is all cheap you get a course spend more but let's just look at it on the minimal end of things so about 200 dollars worth of hardware there and then opex your operational or ongoing expenditure you're talking about probably I'm paying like 15 bucks a month for a 4G data sim to just just for backup. That's all it does, literally. It sits in the router and is waiting for the main network to go down so that it can back up the primary connectivity. So a uh, capex of 200 and opex of about $15 per month recurring. So uh, not expensive. And I think that if you are running a home-based business, which is what I'm doing, which is what my wife is uh, currently doing for the most part, uh, you know, and you internet connectivity is your it's everything if you don't have that you can't work you can't you can't do zoom meetings you can't collaborate with people i think it's really uh it's kind of a no-brainer in an ideal world um you would need to do this we just have would have great internet connectivity from isps and maybe they'd be um they'd already be sort of you know have this uh failover built in and they'd never go down but until we get to that point this is one way to work around that final thing to say is if your internet goes down it's one thing what if your power goes down so power backup is another thing you can do if you want to really take this to the ninth degree so typically uh, routers are low draw devices can't say the same thing for computers but if you want to keep your internet going in the event of a uh, long power outage whatever so uh, a ups is the very obvious answer a uninterruptible power supply now, um, routers, you can measure them by buying a kilowatt and you can see firsthand that they draw almost nothing. Um, so that's the first thing is you can probably run all your networking hardware off one UPS. Now, maybe that's a bad idea. If it is, you can let me know in the comments. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea. That's I think if they're all co-located in one physical box, just go ahead and do it. Um, but you could also do one UPS for each each uh router and that would mean power drops well you're gonna have now you're gonna have backup internet and the backup system is gonna run as long as all two modems and one load balancer can keep powered uh and i forgot the wi-fi router so in total for this setup i'm describing i'm actually using four pieces of hardware there's the isp um router there is the load balancer there is the cellular router and finally, there's the router and there's the actual Wi-Fi router. And finally, there's the AP if you want to add that. So really five. So kind of a lot of gear, but, you know, it does the trick. So um, I think that's really all there is to say about it. Um, if you're really concerned with getting internet that doesn't go down, you could, of course, take this further. You could you could have four internet connectivities 
coming into a uh, you know a load balancer with four ones, and um, then you have no you know. But I, I think I think the diminishing returns is really going to set in after two because the chances of your wired network and your mobile uh, provider, your MVNO, going down at the exact same time, we're already looking at a very very small percentage over just having a single connection. And I think adding three or four connections, you're going to be adding more subscriptions, more expense. I don't think for most home users it would be worthwhile. Um, hope that video was interesting. Feel free to shoot me a comment uh, in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. To get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.